Hello, Dr. Schwartz. I am uh, Betty Casey, editor of Tulsa Kids Magazine, and we have been partnering with the Children's Hospital at St. Francis to bring you some great information uh, that, it, that is important to the health of families. So today we're with um, Dr. Mark Schwartz, and he's been with us before. Dr. Schwartz is a fellowship-trained pediatric, uh, fellowship trained pediatric orthopedic surgeon with Warren Clinic and the Children's Hospital at St. Francis. He graduated from medical school at the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences. He did his residency at Oklahoma State University and completed a fellowship at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Schwartz. Glad to be back with you guys. Okay, today we're going to be talking about fractures. <laughs> <laughs> um let's let's start I, I mean we're heading into the summer and and I think it's probably true that um kids are out playing riding their bikes doing some things that might uh, create some more opportunities for fractures and and some broken bones um so let's let's start with defining a fracture is it the same thing as a broken bone so I get that question a lot in the office. A, a fracture is, is really just the medical terminology for a broken bone. So a break and a fracture are, are the same thing, essentially. When, when you come to my office, people, people tend to think they're a, a different version of a, of a broken bone and a fracture, but it's, it's really the same thing. Okay. Okay. So, so we're talking about broken bones, fractures as the same thing. So what are the most common uh, fractures in children that you see? The most common fractures we tend to see in children are, are wrist fractures and elbow fractures. Those tend to be the ones that we see the most um, based on the activities that kids are doing. There, there are lots of, lots of falls and kids tend to, to reach out with their arms as they're falling. So those tend to be the ones that we see the most of, but definitely wrist fractures are the, the number one thing I take care of in my office, followed pretty closely by elbow fractures. We see quite a bit of leg fractures as well, but not, not in the same frequency as we see uh, upper extremity fractures. So we, those are more often caused by falls. Is there any uh, protective equipment uh, kids could wear to protect them from, say, their skateboarding and I mean, I know helmets are important, but is there anything that can protect wrists and elbows? So first off, I would say as an orthopedic surgeon, obviously I don't take care of heads, but that is the number one thing I always push for in kids is, is wearing their helmets because we can fix bones pretty easily. We can't fix heads quite as well. So, so I always recommend that if kids are on bikes or skateboards or other, other things like that, that they're wearing a helmet. For bikes, it's difficult to wear wrist braces or anything like that because holding onto the handlebars makes it a little unsafe. But anytime kids are skating or skateboarding, I think it would be a good idea for them to be wearing wrist braces. That'll definitely help prevent some of those some of those fractures when they're when they're falling and reaching out to catch themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what are the different types of fractures that you typically see? Um, so we see a lot of a lot of fractures of the wrists and elbow that I that I was talking about. We see a lot of those in the office. Um, a lot of younger kids with leg fractures, we're able to see those in the office as well. Um, once kids start getting older, a lot of the bigger fractures, talking about like femur fractures and a lot of the tibia fractures, those tend to be ones that come into the hospital that that tend to need a little bit more acute care in the hospital as opposed to being able to be taken care of in the office, but we still take care of quite a few uh, lower extremity fractures in the office as well. Okay. And then thinking about um, the, I, I mean, I always hear, or you hear that children heal more quickly than adults or old people like me. So is that, is that accurate? Um, do children's bones actually heal faster than adults or seniors? And yeah. how long does it take, like if, for say a wrist fracture or something that you see? So kids definitely will heal faster than than adults do. There's a there's a layer of tissue that surrounds the bones um, that tends to be a lot thicker in children, so they have a lot better blood flow to the bones, and they tend to heal their fractures a lot faster than than adults do. Um, and um, they typically will heal in somewhere between four and six weeks is the majority of fractures. 
the younger a kid is, the faster it will heal. Some of the wrist fractures I take care of when kids are, are healed within three to four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, start getting into the older teenagers, you're looking at closer to the six week mark for, for healing a lot of the fractures. Okay, that's faster than I would think. Um, and what are the treatments for these various types of fractures? Um, and then how do you determine what will need a cast what will require surgery or maybe are there fractures that don't need casts? So there's there's some fractures that sometimes we, we don't put into a cast. We can use different types of braces for certain fractures. Um, the majority of fractures I take care of do get put into casts. We, we really try and put kids into waterproof casts here at our office. Um, we find it to be great for the kids because they're able to participate in other activities and stuff, maybe go into their swim classes and things like that, that they wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Um, and then it allows the, a lot, a lot more helpful for the families because it allows them to, to shower and bathe the kids and not, not end up with these really stinky casts at the end of it, <laughs> um, and not having to worry about wrapping the, wrapping the arms or legs in a bag and things like that. So it's really good, uh, to be able to get them into these waterproof casts. So we treat a lot of fractures in those, um, some fractures do end up needing surgery, um, and we we try and we try and treat fractures as much as we can in a cast, and, and try and avoid surgery as much as we can. But some surgeries are necessary for these kids, depending on the the fracture type and the location of the fracture, um, and sometimes depending on the the displacement or the angulation of the fracture necessitates them having a surgery for it. Some fractures tend to be more unstable than others and just can't be held appropriately inside of a cast. Uh, and those are the ones that we tend to lean towards towards surgery. It's always something that we have a discussion with the family about and kind of discuss the the options of of mm -hmm. operative versus non-operative treatments to to see if it's something that that we can avoid surgery. And in some cases we can and in, in some cases we just need to do surgery for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have heard stories this did not happen to me but if you if you're a parent uh sometimes you you might not take your child to the doctor and then you find out later oh my child had a a fracture and I didn't know it so let's say your child falls at the playground or is injured during a sporting event what kinds of things should a parent know about whether it's serious enough to seek care or should it, what what should parents be aware of and what should they do so I think the obvious ones are, are kids that that fall and have an obvious deformity of their arm or their leg. Obviously, those are the ones that that need to come in and be seen more acutely because they likely need need to be reset and put back into place um, in the emergency department or potentially in the operating room if necessary. So those ones are the easy ones for parents to be able to decide to bring the kids in. The the non displaced fractures tend to be a little bit more difficult. If kids are starting to have quite a bit of swelling or they're starting to show bruising or if they're they're crying for more than than 20, 30 minutes or something after the injury, likely it's something that should get looked into further. If a kid's pretty quickly consolable um, and tends to not be hurting a little while later within an hour or two, then, then it's probably OK. But if they're continuing to to hurt into the into the late afternoon or evening, it's it's something that they probably should get taken look, a look at and, and potentially get an X-ray for. Okay, so so you mentioned bruising, swelling, continued pain. Mm -hmm. uh, those are all signs that your, your child may need to be looked at further. And uh, of course, always, I, I think, err on the side of caution. I would think yeah, we'll see absolutely. the pediatrician if you're. And you then for the really little kids, a lot of times they'll they'll hurt their their legs um, from a fall, and those are ones that if the kid is continuing to not bear weight on the leg that's a pretty okay. pretty clear sign that that yeah. something more is going on because kids are pretty quick to get back to to walking and doing the activities they want to do so if they're if they're going more than a couple hours and refusing to bear weight on the leg after an injury there's probably a, a good chance that there's there's some sort of fracture within the leg okay okay good advice okay and then what are your recommendations for parents who may be dealing with a potential fracture what should they do when seeking care for their child um and do, does everything need to be seen immediately can something wait until the next morning um are there things that can wait and then or or there things that you mentioned the sort of the odd 
you know, a child that has a something going on with an arm that is not looking normal, I would think that would be an urgent care. But how do you know if you should wait or um, get seek immediate care? How do you know? So I think the the kids who are who have the deformity, those are the ones that definitely need more urgent care um, in terms of going to uh, an urgent care or to the emergency department. Um, if the if the child doesn't seem to be hurting too bad, but then wakes up the next morning and is continuing to be complaining about the pain, I think that's a a, a reasonable one to potentially wait till the next day to be seen. Um, but if the parents have any concern, I think that that getting the kid in and getting them seen and getting an X ray is is always a a good option um, to avoid any sort of delayed care for something that may need something sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think um, you know we don't want to be left with that parent guilt that we didn't, <laughs> didn't yeah. see a doctor. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much. This was great information, especially as we head into the summer and kids become more active and outside more. Um, I want to, I, I appreciate you and uh, our partnership with St. Francis. If you be sure to read this uh, interview on, on in the Tulsa Kids Magazine, we have PJ's Corner, and then you can also watch the interview or read the entire interview on uh, on our website at tulsakids.com. But we really appreciate your, your time this morning, Dr. Schwartz, and we appreciate St. Francis and, and their partnership in this. Thank you. The one thing I would that I would like to add is that okay. is that kids. The one thing we see a lot of in kids that people ask about a lot is whether the fracture involves the growth plate. So that's an important difference between adults and kids is that a lot of pediatric fractures do involve the growth plate, and taking care of the growth plate is is something that is taken care of sometimes very differently than than an adult fracture is taken care of. It's really important that we get those fractures taken care of soon and get them taken care of appropriately so that the kids continue to grow normally. The majority of growth plate fractures continue to grow normally and don't, don't have long-term problems, but it's important that we, that we see those. And that's one of the advantages, I think, to seeing a pediatric orthopedic surgeon is that we have extra additional training specifically towards treating growth plate fractures. So that's the difference between coming in and seeing a pediatric orthopedic surgeon as opposed to going to, to some of the adult orthopedic surgeons who are, we have great orthopedic surgeons in the city, but I think that right. that's a big difference that sets us apart. Yeah. It's a, yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought about that, but I, as you were talking too, I thought about, um, yeah, children are still growing, their bones are still growing, which would be very different from an adult. But also if a child has had a fra fracture, uh, is that, bone then more compromised moving forward or do they completely heal and they're completely safe or does it is it does it vary so it depends on the fracture there's some fractures that tend to be more prone to to refracturing um, fractures of the middle of the forearm tend to be the highest ones to go on to refracture so we tend to treat those a little bit more conservatively and keep kids in a brace with activities a little bit longer than we do a lot of the other fractures but once you get past a certain point, um, usually these fractures heal completely and the kids are at no more risk for, for breaking that same same bone as they would any other bone in their body. Okay, that's great. So, so yeah, pediatric, uh, sorry, pediatric orthopedic surgeon or doctor is um, specially trained, obviously, to treat children and in, in, in the way they grow and the way their bones are, with the way they're put together. Um, well, Thank you, Dr. Schwartz. Again, um, you can find this on TulsaKids.com or in our magazine at PJ's Corner. So we appreciate your time today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Sorry. No, that's okay. Oh, no, I lost it. <laughs> Where's the record? <laughs> okay. We're just going to end. Okay. <laughs>